I am so happy to be back as a part of the committee for Hope Summit 2018. I'm a returning speaker from 2016, and I have to say coming not as a speaker is so much less nerve-wracking than it was last time. <laughs> but to those of you that are sharing your stories today and bearing your soul, thank you so much. We need more of this. And it is with great honor that I am here to introduce our next speaker, Dwayne Williams. Dwayne was born and raised in Jamaica. He immigrated to Canada in 2005 in order to attend Victory Bible College in Calgary. A highly insightful master of metaphors, Duane has overcome immense challenges in his life. He is honored to share with you, the Hope Summit attendees, his personal journey and messages of culture, courage, and strength. Please welcome Duane Williams. Thank you very much. It is with great privilege I I am so I'm so <laughs> appreciative of um, the Hope Summit team for giving me this opportunity to share my story. I grew up in Jamaica, in a little town called Racecourse. I grew up where there, is, there was hills, valleys, you know, lots of fun stuff to do. In the midst of this, I grew up with an abusive stepdad, and that was very nice. <laughs> the abusive situation started when I was eight years old. When my mom would go away, he would constantly physically abuse me. He would hit me in the head a number of times and use the electrical card to whip me. Eight years old, as a kid, you don't know what to do when you're in these kind of situations. I didn't know what to do, who to call out to. I was by myself. Most of the time, he would go out drinking for days because he works on the, used to work on the, ra the railroad. So he'd come in drunk, and he would start on me when he has problems of his own. He would take it out on me because my mom wasn't around. And even if she was around, she couldn't control him. I remember I was outside cooking in a milk can. Small, just as small as my hand here. Because the, in, in the country, you could go you know, dig a yam or something to help yourself. So I did that, and I normally use kerosene oil to light the wood, but that day I was searching for the kerosene oil, but I couldn't find it. I searched until I took up the wrong guy. It was unleaded gas, 90. That's plain fuel. And I poured it out as a little kid, Eight years old, I poured out on the fire, didn't know that it would blow up. And when I strike the match, everything just blew up in my face. Neighbors rushed, came over to do to look, you know, find out what was wrong. I was just standing like this because I was shocked, I was frightened, I was afraid. My face was so burnt my chest, my arms. It was, I was in a devastating situation. Didn't know what to do. People come and look, but nobody tried to help me or to deal with the burn. So eight years old, a burned face, an abusive stepdad, how do I navigate all of this. As an eight-year-old kid, how do I go through this? How do I find a way to get over this, to deal with this devastating situation? A couple months after that, I started feeling sick. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I would go to my bed with the burned face, burnt arms, I didn't know what to do. I would wake up feeling my heart 
just pounding away like that, and my body would feel warm, and I didn't know what it was. Months passed by feeling the same way. Didn't know what to do. I was in a trap. I was in a prison with no walls. I had a godmother. She lived in the same community. So one day she stopped by to see if I was doing okay. My stepdad was there, and she came into the house, and she sat at the table with him and me, and she said, are you doing okay? And he said, oh, yeah, everything is okay. And because I couldn't, I couldn't say anything, because if I had said anything, when she's gone, he would turn on me and say, I'm blaming him. And then the spanking would start again. I remember one day, it was one Friday, he came home, and I don't know what his problem was, was drunk, and he, I said something, and he said, are you, are you going to go someplace or what? And I said, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, and I was just... In a, wasn't in a good mood. And then he grabbed me with the burned face, still haven't gotten better yet. And then I could remember that day, his feet was on my head, and he was strapping me on the back with the electrical card. That day, I, I, I bled so much, couldn't go to any hospital or anything, and someone noticed that my back was bleeding. And I couldn't lay on my back. My legs was all cut up because it's electrical car with the wire sticking out on the side of it. What do I do? I'm stuck. Reach 11 years old. What do I do? Remember that Saturday morning I decided I, there's, I have to do something about this. The only person that I could go to was my godmother. I went there crying because this was getting, this is intense. I have to get out of this or else I'm going to end up dead. I went to her house, knocked on the door, and I was crying, and she met me with open arms. And she was crying as well. Because she knew that something was really, really wrong. And after I finished crying, she, you know, as a godmother, she, she sat there with the, the rag and she was kind of drying up my tears. <laughs> and what she told me, she said, I can't, I can't take you away from him, and there's nothing I can do because if I take you here, he's going to come here looking for you when I'm not here. So she said to me, I want you to build a confession. And she wrote out the words to me and said, I want you to Confess these things, these words, every day when you get up, three times a day. And I said to her, I don't, I don't feel like to, you know, confess anything because I'm not feeling that I'm alive. I feel hopeless and I have no joy, I have no peace. All I have is bitterness and anger. So anyways, I said to her, I will, even though I'm feeling pain, I'm bleeding inside with hatred and hunger for stepdads and moms that don't, you know, care about their kids. I will do what, I'll do what you say. So I started, she encouraged me, she said, let your confession become your 
declaration over your life. And I said, how do, how do you <laughs> make a declaration over your life when you're in distress, when you're in pain, when you're boiling up with hatred and anger? Anyways, I started to confess what she told me to do. And she said, this will replace evil with good, replace bitterness with happiness. I couldn't see that at that point because I was going through depression and anxiety and my stepdad was abusing me at the same time. So what do you tell an 11-year-old kid how to confess this and things will get better? A couple months passed by, confessing it, things just seem to be getting worse and worse. And I said to myself, I don't think this confession thing is working. I might have to run away or something. But I couldn't run away because if I do run away, you would know where I am and you would find me. I, start, I still confess my confession every day. In a month and a half after, I felt that there was a change in the atmosphere. I felt that the confession was finally, you know, taking root in my life. I felt a change in my mind. I felt peace, the peace and the joy coming back. She said, write your confession and repeat it four times. Do it three times daily, but repeat it four times. Because I was repeating it once. She said, repeat it four times. It's just like A, B, C. You say A, B, C, D, until it reads Z, and then you start again. Do it four times. I did that. And here's my confession. I declare victory over every sickness, depression, anxiety, and anything that will bring harm to my life. I declare victory over every lie and rejection that have been spoken over my life from my childhood until now. I declare victory over every doubt, opposition, and unworthiness in my life. My confession became like a wall of protection around me. My confession became my candle in the dark places of my life. My confession became the sword to fight my battles daily with depression, anxiety, and rejection, and abusive stepdad. My godmother said, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your ear. <laughs> she said, you can't stop the situation from coming, but you can, you can decide where it goes. You can come up with strategies to deal with it. She said, guard your heart because out of it flows the virtues of life. That's why I have this on. I, it, I'm wearing it just in remembrance of her, what she told me before she died. She said, son, I'm going to give you these words before my eyes close. She said, promise me that you will draw from the well of your confession. When you're feeling down, depressed, anxiety, draw from that well of your confession. Make that confession known. Say it so you, your body, mind, and spirit can hear me. My confession became the bridge over the waters. 
Now, my struggle is daily with anxiety and depression. The struggle is not over. As my godmother said, it's not over until it's over. Daily, I make my confession known to myself that this is who I am. And although the struggle is there, my confession helps me to overcome it. It's not easy. I fall down, but my confession helps me to rise up and I keep going again. My confession regenerates me. It fills me up. It gives me the, that overcoming power to overcome my struggle, my depression, anxiety daily. Every morning I would, I get up, I would plug into my confession. When I feel down, I plug into my confession. When I feel like I'm not going to make it through the day, I plug into my confession. My confession gives me great peace and sweet rest. Today, my confession has become my stronghold that I can rely on. I've proven it, I've tested it, I've experienced it, I've tasted it, and I'm now living in it. When my godmother died, she had passed on the information to my grandmother and said, make sure you keep encouraging your grandson because he's going to be facing this depression and anxiety probably most of his life. So I, she passed on the word that she should continue to encourage me to keep the confession going. Even when I'm feeling down, don't feel like it, keep the confession going. Because of my confession, I'm alive today. If it wasn't for my confession, I would have died a long time ago. And I'll repeat my confession, which is behind me. I declare victory over every sickness, depression, anxiety, and anything that will bring harm to my life. I declare victory over every lie and rejection that have been spoken over my life from my childhood until now. I declare victory over every doubt, fear, op opposition, unworthiness in my life. I declare health, prosperity, healing, and deliverance over my body, soul, and spirit. The summary of my confession. My confession is my solid foundation that I can rely on. My confession is my swinging bridge over the river and a long, long cross. My confession is my solid rock when the raging tempest of life circumstances comes, I am not shaken. My confession is my secret hiding place that gives me wings to soar to new heights like the eagle. My confession is the shield that protects me day and night. My confession is my daily remedy for any situation. When I said any situation, I have proven this. This is a remedy for any situation. And I've used it, I've tested it, and it worked. Any situation, even the, the money situation. <laughs> My 
My confession is my final resting place where I find joy, peace, contentment, where I find sweet relief from my struggles. I am thankful to my, God, my godmother for leaving me with this legacy of life's truth and my grandmother for encouraging me to continue the, in, the, the initiation. My heart is filled with gratitude to my grandmother who really brought to light the importance of the seed that was sown in my life by my godmother. God bless her heart. I'll leave you with these words. Journey in light, journey in hope, journey in peace. Thank you.